I always wanted to work with plant. Left straight from school, been here 13 years. Callum's a fixed plant foreman, fitter. He runs a small team and they maintain the plant, and he does a very good job for us. He's a family man, good fitter, known him for a long time. Nice kidding. Here we go. I'd already done a couple of jobs that morning and then went over to the secondary to start on the next job. The job that we were tasked with was to change wear plates in A-Line Hammer Mill. Climbing inside the mill for me is a weekly activity, a monthly activity, something I just got used to doing. This day was no different to any other day. Strict isolation procedures are in place due to the severity of the piece of equipment. So we went in and then set about the procedure of isolating the hammer mill that I was due to be working on. I'd locked the door up as I normally would, filled out the isolation form. The plant had been loaded and there were other people working on it at the time, so I tried the two conveyors to see if they would start, which they didn't, but I didn't do this on the hammer mill. So we got the kit that we needed to gain entry to the mill and proceeded to open up the back door so we could gain entry into it in there probably half hour, 40 minutes total. After we'd fastened the mill back up, we took all the kit back down and put it in the back of the Land Rover. The phone call came through that Callum had finished on the A-Line mill. The mill was actually isolated. They couldn't start the plant because they could see that it was actually in the isolated position now. So he phoned me back to say that I had isolated the mill, to which I replied, I can't have done, I've just, just switched it back on. So again, went through the procedure of opening up the door, and as soon as I opened up the cover, I realised what I'd done. I'd locked that part of plant in the on position so it could have started up. If you're in there and that piece of kit starts, there is no second chance. You will die. It's all operated remotely from a central control room. The operative could have believed that Callum had finished his job, re-energised the plant, and that operative could have pushed the start button to, to start the hammer mill. The mill could have been started so easily. It, I don't think you would probably get any closer to it, to death. Well, I was one mouse click away from that mill starting. You know, it was easy to click, that's it. The plant would have started up, Callum would have been sucked into the hammer mill and it would have been turned into shreds. When I'd realised what I'd done, I felt sick. I just wanted to get my bags and go home. Other people were working within the plant area. And because the conveyor belts leading from the crusher were full of stone, he would have had to have, have evacuated the building to be able to start up the entire plant to take the stone away from that discharge conveyor belt. And in essence, trying to make the job maybe easier for other people, or maybe thinking it was too difficult to follow the procedure. And he could have paid for that with his life that day. At that point, Callum had two, two decisions to make, really. He could have said to the guys in the, in the loadout that, uh, the plant was now ready to start and everything was all okay and no one would have been any the wiser. Or he could have held his hand up and said, I've made a big mistake here and, and if I've done this, somebody else could do. In aggregate industry, there's a poem entitled I could have saved a life that day. Somebody for whatever reason could make the same mistake again. I was prepared to take the consequences, whatever they would have been. Callum's view from the moment he raised the alarm and his opening words to his, to his manager was, I think I'm gonna lose my job here, but I need to tell you what I've just done. He left sight, he, he drove for a couple of minutes and then he, he felt he couldn't drive anymore and he, and he pulled over on the side of the road and he, he broke down. He rang his partner, Kylie, and he told her what he had done. First words were, I've messed up. Um, I didn't know what to say, I couldn't get any words out. I uh, got a little boy at home that I didn't want to leave behind. I know. I... He described it as a push of a button. That's, that would be me gone. What went through your mind when you got off the phone? What if I lost him? Sorry. I could be without a fiance. Jacob could be without a dad. And I'm pregnant. I was in my early stages. 
So obviously that brought home that two of our children might not have a father and I might not have a fiance. When he got home, they then sat down for a, a couple of hours and, and discuss their future. I thought I was going to lose my job. Wouldn't help me. Wouldn't be able to provide for her and the, you know, the little boy and the baby. We were actually due to go on holiday on the Monday. I had it playing on my mind all the time what had happened. Callum's not really the one to talk over things. <clears throat> he normally brushes things under the carpet. Not this. This was a whole different story. It was. It was. I'm really nervous. I just hope I don't lose my job. I didn't think I'd be given a second chance. The night before the disciplinary, um, he didn't sleep, didn't sleep a wink. We operate what we call the fair and just model. We have tried to champion Callum as a leader of how we should culturally be, be operating, really. When I came out of the interview, I spoke to Kylie. He phoned me on the way home. And told her that, uh, you know, I've given a final written warning, but I was so happy um, I'd been given that second chance. I was over the moon, over the moon. The event has had a massive impact on everybody on site. Procedures have been changed. I think everyone's slowed down a little bit and took stock about what we do. It sends a chill through everybody when we talk about it. It's a point that's emotionally affected Callum. I don't think I'll move away from it anytime soon. It's still in, in my head, still in Callum's head. It was a wake-up call. I was lucky that day. If I had a died, I wouldn't have been able to play with the boy. I wouldn't have seen a baby grow up. Callum's future prospects on site are very good. Life moving forward is going to be good. Um, say you got baby due in March, which is really, really exciting times. We've got Jacob that's just turned two. Fingers crossed, we've got lots to look forward to. They could have lost all of that, and that would have been devastating. <laughs>